Hi everyone, welcome to the Elia Beans Show. Today I'm having somebody awesome. This is Dr. Thomas Hemingway. He's a holistic and an integrated medical doctor. His goal is to save a hundred million lives by optimizing health and wellness through natural means. And I absolutely love that. So welcome, Dr. Thomas. Are you there? Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. It's so awesome to be with you today. Aloha. Aloha. So Dr. Thomas is actually joining us through Zoom all the way from beautiful Hawaii. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me in an hour where it's not the middle of the night. Sometimes I come on these things and I got to get up in the middle of the night because <laughs> our time yeah. frame is so much different. So it's such a pleasure to be here with you and your audience today. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. So I wanted to, so obviously I read your, your biography, which I absolutely loved. Uh, I mean, there's, there's so much about your, the way that you um, conduct health, you know, it's, it's so much more into the natural holistic way. And I love that. I love that. I read about um, you coming up with a book, Preventable. So if you want to talk about a little bit about this, this book, Preventable, what's, what's, what's Preventable <laughs> about? Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing because most doctors don't talk about this at all. And mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, I feel like it's a big void. It's something we're really missing because most people don't know this, that seven out of 10 of the leading causes of death, seven of 10 are almost entirely preventable. So this is like heart disease. That's the number one killer, not only in the US, but in the world, worldwide, number one killer, heart disease, number two, cancer, stroke, diabetes, you know, these are the top five, and they're all preventable to the greatest degree. And most of us don't even know that we think that we're destined to, you know, if our parents had heart disease, we're going to have heart disease, or if our parents got cancer, we're going to have cancer, it's all in the genes. Well, the, the interesting uh, thing is that now we understand that the genes or our DNA, if you will, only plays about 10% or less. Some studies showing as little as 1% as wow. far as our health outcome. And that 90 plus percent of it is up to us and up to what we do, what we do or we don't do, right? Our choices. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wrote this book because there is so much we can do. We are not victims of our DNA. You know, there's literally so much that can be done. And most of the things are quite simple. I, I, you know, delineate five simple steps in the book that I focus a lot on. And there are things that we can do simply, easily each and every day. And they're all free. None of them cost any money. And you can literally change your health, change your life in an instant. And these things are free. So that's why I wrote the book preventable five powerful practices to avoid disease and to build unshakable health. I just, I just love to share this message. <laughs> I, I love that. And, and that's also why I wanted to bring you into the show because um, of your, your philosophy, you know, your philosophy of actually empowering your clients, empowering your, uh, your patients, you know, the way that they can change their health by doing simple things that are actually free. So, I mean, that, that's something that not every doctor in the U.S. or in the world would actually do. I mean, they go directly to, you know, they just want to treat the symptoms with, you know, pharmaceutical medicine and that's, that's it, right? But you actually are one of those small percentage of uh, doctors that actually really care about their patients and, you know, the world, really the world because uh, you want to optimize the health of people and teaching people how they can optimize their health by doing simple things that are absolutely free. So one of the other things that I wanted to ask you, it's about food, you know, food is a medicine and it, or it could also be a slow poison and how, and you get to decide. So look, talk about that. Like, let, like, show let, let us know like what is this what is this like whole difference of you know food could be uh, the best medicine but it could also be 
you know, a slow poison as well. Yeah. So, so this is something that's literally been known for thousands of years, but we haven't focused on it. The, mm -hmm. One of the original, you know, sine qua non doctors, Hippocrates actually said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, because it really all starts with what I like to say in, in the cart at the grocery store at the end of our fork, because you just can't outrun the end of your fork. And what I mean by that is that each and every day, most of us have at least two or three opportunities to fill our bodies full of the most healthful, energizing, natural foods, or if we choose to buy things that come with what I call the three Bs that come in a box or in a bag or with a barcode, most of these things are processed foods, then food could be a poison for us. So it could literally be the best possible medicine ever or it could be a slow poison and we get to decide. And so first and foremost, I think, you know, the thing we need to focus on is just to eat real food, stuff that comes from nature or from the ground, the field or from God, however you like to look at it, the stuff that grows in the earth, eat real food. If you go and you buy something and you look at the ingredients list and there's 50 things on there and most of them you don't understand and you think they might, you know, be in a chemistry lab or something, then then you shouldn't buy that. I mean, my grandmother taught me as a kid that you are what you eat. And I think most of us have heard that, but it has never really sunk in, you know, especially when we're younger, we just seem to eat whatever we want because we're super active. We go out and we're either doing things via exercise or we're just up on our feet doing things all day. Like my kids, I have, I have six kids and I have four teenagers and they're like running around, jumping, you know, skating, running, surfing, biking, hiking all day long. And so, it, you know, for them, it seems like they can eat whatever they want. But what my message is that it all matters. It all counts. <laughs> Our body is smart. It recognizes yeah. real food and it recognizes the crappy processed food. And we literally make ourselves, our cells, you know, the smallest unit in our body, the cells are actually made of the foods that we eat. So do we want to be made out of an Oreo cookie or a chip or a cracker or, a, you know, Cheetos? Do we want to be made of that or do we want to be made of the things that come from the earth, you know, natural plants, fruits, vegetables, you know, natural, healthy, well-raised meats and fish and things like that. Do we want to be made of the best possible ingredients or do we want to be made from junk food? Like we get to decide that each and every day. And the way that we make that decision will not only help us feel good for the day, but we can feel good for our life because there's this common mi misconception out there that you can just exercise your way out of a crappy diet. You know, my favorite is a couple of years ago, I took my kids to Disneyland and there was a guy that had a t-shirt on that had a picture of a raccoon. And if anybody knows a raccoon, raccoons literally eat garbage. They can eat anything and everything. They, you know, yeah. they literally eat garbage. And the shirt said, had a raccoon that was doing a deadlift of, you know, a bunch of weight and the bar was bending and it says, I work out so I can eat garbage. And it had a raccoon on that shirt. And it's like, Unfortunately, that's the mentality that a lot of us grew up with. Like, it doesn't matter what we eat. We eat whatever we want as long as we exercise. But that is not true. It is so false. You cannot mm -hmm. exercise your way out of a crappy diet. Even though I love to exercise, I'm super active. I surf, I hike, I mountain bike, I run, <clears throat> lift weights. Yes. But it all starts with what ends up on the end of your fork. And it's powerful and it's easy and it's simple, but it can make all the difference in the end. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Uh, a few years ago, I actually did this whole reset in my diet and I let go of some foods that were not being, you know, not doing any great for me. So they were not serving me anymore at all. So I let them go and I noticed a huge change in my health. I mean, not only I was able to avoid cervical cancer and other, you know, other stuff. Uh, I mean, diabetes, all kinds of stuff that I was able to completely avoid in my life. And so, and I just feel like I did this completely reset in my life too. Uh, not only that, I, I felt like even the way my skin looked like almost like, um, like uh, I, I honestly, like I get ask all the time how old I am because people can't believe that I have two older kids that look like my brother and sister but 
you know, and the same thing for you, I was just going to ask, I mean, you don't have to tell me your age, but it's like, you have six kids and you are like super active. You keep up, you know, like you're like, you're almost like, I don't know you that well, but it just seems like you're like this, like almost like a teenager have like that kind of like energy, you know, that high, that energy. So what is something that you do to keep that, you know, cause I'm, I love energy. I'm, you know, I'm a healer too. And I love energy. How do you keep up that level of energy? Yeah. So a couple, couple things, but thank you so much. I'm, I just had a birthday actually. So I'm in my 49th year. I'm almost going to be wow. 50 years old and I am as active as any teenager. In fact, like I said, yeah. I got, I got four boys that are in that category and I can outrun out surf out bike, like any of these guys. And I'm willing to take on almost any young person and I have the energy to do it. And I'm coming up on 50 real soon. And the, re the way that I do it, number one, is I choose my fuel wisely, which is the foods that I eat. I eat, try to eat, you know, exclusively natural, real food. I try to avoid anything processed. And once in a while, I'll buy something like if I'm traveling, but I'll, I'll read the ingredients yeah. very carefully. And I'll use what I call the five ingredient rule, which is I try to keep the ingredients less than five, all things that I recognize and all things that are natural. And so one of the tips I wanted to give folks that are listening is that Start with real food. Make that the overwhelming majority of your diet. Shop on the perimeter of the grocery store. And if you have to dive into the aisles in the middle, make sure you read the ingredients because there are things there that are literally toxic to us that we don't even know about. Nobody tells us about. And this is beyond the simple like avoid sugar, which I'm all about avoiding highly processed carbohydrates, flours, grains, you know, and sugars. I, I almost eat very little carbohydrates. The only ones I do eat are fruits and vegetables primarily. I don't mm -hmm. typically eat any bread or any cereal or any of those processed things. But so start with natural food. And then two, you have to avoid most sugars except the natural ones and what are called the seed oils. The seed oils, most people haven't even heard of, but these are inflammatory, highly processed oils like vegetable oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, rice bran oil, corn oil, anything that says vegetable oil, soybean oil, for example, these are literally toxic to the body because they cause inflammation. One of the things that I appreciate you mentioned is that people say, oh, wow, your skin is amazing. And, and I agree with them 100%. And what happens is when we eat a diet that has inflammatory things like the sugars and highly processed carbohydrates and these oils like soybean oil, for example, we get inflamed. And when we get inflamed, our face gets a little puffy, our skin looks old and wrinkly, you know, it changes a lot. And even for me, I live in Hawaii. If I eat these things and I go out in the sun, what I recognize is I get a bad sunburn because they are so inflammatory, because they actually get into our cells, become part of our cells, and they're very reactive. They're super inflammatory. So I get a bad sunburn. And so I'm, I'm a very light-skinned guy. I never use sunscreen. And I can go out in the sun. I went surfing with my boys for two hours yesterday, and I don't have any painful sunburn anywhere. My shirt was off, and you know I have no issues with it because I don't eat inflammatory foods. And so, so that's number one, food is the most important fuel. And number two is the timing of how you eat. So a lot of folks have probably heard of these things called intermittent fasting, time restricted yeah. eating, there's lots of different styles to it. But what I believe in and what I've recognized in not only my experience, but in my practice is that when I, I kind of isolate the times that I eat to, you know, just a couple times a day, and I try to increase the window where I'm not eating, I actually have a lot more energy. Like right now, for example, it's um, for me coming up on lunchtime and I haven't eaten anything yet today. All I had was a big glass of water this morning. After we chat and we're done, I'll probably have my breakfast, which I usually eat around lunchtime. And the reason I do that is because when you're fasting, you actually have heightened energy. And this is designed for us in thousands of years of being on this world, we were designed to fast because we didn't have a refrigerator. We didn't have a pantry. We didn't have fast food and we had to go hunt for our food. So we didn't roll out of bed and like raid the refrigerator. We had to go for a couple hours, hiking, walking, hunting, looking for berries, whatever it was. And so our bodies were designed to go several hours without eating. And so I incorporate what I call uh, intermittent fast or, or a time restricted uh, eating every day, 
because I feel so much better. And then when I do eat, I mean, if anybody saw me at, at a party or something, if there was good food, I mean, I eat as much as anybody. My kids, my teenagers are probably the only ones that eat more than I do. I mean, I, I love to eat and I'm passionate about food because I love food. And I think so many people out there are restricting themselves so much. Oh, I can't eat this many calories because they have this thing in their head about calories. But if they would eat the natural food and then only eat during certain times and take a window where they're not eating, not only would they have more energy and feel better, but they would actually have much better health, energy, vitality, and be vibrant and alive. Like, like we were talking about, I mean, I'm coming up on a 50 and I do have the energy of any teenager out there. And that's for two reasons. One, the food and the timing of my food. And two, that I am really active. I love to move my body. I love to get exercise or what I just call movement. So those mm -hmm. are really key, key things. Yes, absolutely agree with that. Absolutely agree with that philosophy. Um, uh, how many times a day do you normally eat? So I eat either two or three times, but I do that in about a six to eight hour window. So okay. I do what I call a overnight circadian fast. So I try to eat my dinner by seven, you know, mm -hmm. or so maybe eight if it's a weekend. And then I don't eat again the next day until about noon or lunchtime. So that's 16 hours. Sometimes I'll wait a little longer, 18 hours. And I do that about five days a week. I don't do it every day. And I, I wouldn't recommend people do it every single day because then your body kind of gets used to it. And then the, the body wants to hold on to those calories a little bit more, you know, aggressively and doesn't want to like, if you want to lose a couple of pounds and you intermittent fast every day for a year in the first couple of months, you'll see tremendous benefit. After that, you'll have some lag because the body adjusts it gets used mm -hmm. to it. And then it tries to hold on to the calories. It thinks you're in uh, starvation mode. So you want to mix it up. I do it about five days a week. I eat over about a six to eight hour window and I fast the rest of the time, 14 to 16 hours. But in that six or eight hours, I eat at least two meals, sometimes three meals, depending on, you know, what my schedule is, but most often two meals a day. I eat like a big kind of breakfast lunch, which is lots of protein, lots of healthy fats, very little carbs in the morning. And then for dinner, I have very much similar food with protein and healthy fats, but I eat some more carbs at dinner. I tend to eat the carbs more towards the end of the day, which the studies show that they will spike your blood sugar less. If you eat a big carbohydrate meal in the morning, like the standard American breakfast, you know, pancakes mm -hmm. or bagels, yep. croissants, you know, all these things, scones, that's like the worst time of the day to eat a bunch of carbohydrates to start your day. You want to start it with healthy protein, healthy fat, because that'll give you energy and it'll satiate you. So you won't feel like you have to eat in two or three more hours, which is what happens when you eat too many carbohydrates. So mm -hmm. personally, I eat about two meals a day, sometimes three, but in between the meals, uh, like if you eat three a day, I would recommend doing something called a four, four, 12. Don't eat 12 hours between dinner and breakfast. And then each meal during the day, try to separate the meals by about four hours each at a minimum and try not to snack in between. Cause every time you're snacking, what happens is your body gets more and more dependent upon those snack foods. And most of the snack foods that we eat in, in the developed world are highly carbohydrate rich yeah. snack foods. They're very good for us. And they spike our glucose and our insulin and they make our body dependent on them. And we get, if we don't eat them, we get hangry, right? This whole world yes. nowadays, you know, uses hangry as part of the vernacular. When I was a kid, I never even, we never used the word hangry because we right. didn't eat that way. We didn't have snack food. We just ate three meals a day, but we didn't eat in between. And if we did, maybe we had a piece of fruit or a banana or something like that, but we didn't have snack food when I was a kid. So we were right. so much healthier. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just saying that to someone that, you know, I grew up in Mexico, South of Mexico. So it's very tropical. We ate a lot of tropical fruits. We always ate fruits of the season too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, growing up like that and then comparing to living here in the U.S. now and the way my kids are growing up and the whole, you know, snacking and all this processed food. And I mean, the first time I saw um, frozen chicken, I thought it was the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> I was like, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's chicken. I'm like, do you keep it in the freezer? Like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, you know, like I was so used to just eating everything fresh, you know? It's like the chicken, you eat the chicken, you kill the chicken that day and you eat it that day and that's it, right? It's all, all natural, all fresh. And 
So comparing to, you know, the way growing up in a third world country and a first world country, you start thinking about like, what are they really doing with our health, you know, in the health system? What are they really, really doing it with the nutrition and, you know, all these things that they're just putting like, you know, crap and really like all this, you know, like media marketing, all these foods that are really poison for our bodies. Uh it's yeah, crazy. There's, there's, there's actually several thousand chemical additives that have been approved for human use, and most of them have never been formally studied. And they call them the quote unquote, you know, food. Um, so, so I call processed food a food like substance, you know, anything that has a label that's a you know, a cracker, a cookie, a chip, but uh, you know, all these, even most of the like granola bars, healthy, quote unquote, healthy snack bars. Most of those are full of crappy ingredients, terrible ingredients, including yeah. these high acid sugars, but also the seed oils like sunflower, safflower, mm. canola oil. Even if they're organic canola oil, these things are super inflammatory. If we were to go um, and eat like you did as a kid and just eat what you got that day, whether the fresh fruit of the field or the chicken that was literally, you know, that morning, you know, you guys it took care of that, that and cooked yeah. it up for that same meal, like the stuff of the day, like fresh food all the time, we would literally nearly eliminate problems like diabetes, problems like heart disease and most cancer, which comes from a bad diet or just a lot of inflammatory foods, which are largely those that are processed, that come from a factory, that come in a box or with a bag or a barcode. So if we ate like you did as a kid, we would have no issues or very little, very little issues. And, and that's the start of the whole process is, is that simple daily choice to eat real food and it's not hard it's not difficult we recognize real food you know if you eat real food you don't even have an ingredients list you know if you look at the other things you might have to charge through 50 different ingredients you know now they're making all these fake substitutes you know when i was a kid they made yeah. fake butter you know the margarine and the spreads mm -hmm. now they make oh, fake, yeah. fake eggs and fake meat and you look at the ingredients and there's like 50 things on there most of them that sound like they belong in a chemistry lab how could that possibly ever be good for you you right. know i'm, I'm all for plant-based eating if it's actually the stuff you find in the garden if it's in the right. garden i know what it is i recognize it that's amazing but if you're adding a bunch of chemicals to it and then making it into this artificial meat or artificial eggs or whatever that doesn't make any sense we weren't no that's not the, 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 the whole idea ago. of the beyond burger i, I mean know. it's disgusting Gross, yeah. <laughs> i mean and, and if they knew there's so many like not there's like full of canola oil and yeah that. yeah just like canola you oil, you know, like, oil. yes i mean all this like inflammatory stuff and they and they marketing that as something healthy yeah it's it's just absolutely mind-blowing when you start thinking about like oh yeah they're you know they're it's like yeah beyond meat now you cannot eat actually eat meat if you're you know on this plant-based diet but it's like that's not really plant-based it's a that's chemical poison. i mean it thrives <laughs> in the laboratory and super and at the bottom of the line the end of the day is they're very inflammatory foods anything that's not natural that comes from a processing plant you know a machine a, a lab those are going to be very inflammatory it's not natural it's not the way we were meant to to eat like you were saying as a kid and like we did thousands even even just a hundred years ago our diet was so much better nobody died of heart disease a hundred years ago at least very small amounts of course they died of other things like infection so i'm all for you know the appropriate antibiotic if you have a bacterial infection but nowadays we we just prescribe everything just because it's easy not because it's necessary but because it's easy and and i think most doctors they don't teach this simple concept of food as medicine because number one they're not really you know emphasized and taught that in school number two it doesn't make anybody money right the the big companies that are selling the food or the pharmaceuticals don't make any money when you tell them that everybody to eat natural real food they would have to change their whole uh, approach and sell just real food and stop selling all these things in boxes and bags and with the barcode and with long ingredients lists, right? So, so Absolutely. people ask, well, why don't more people tell us that? Well, it, it doesn't make the system any money. It makes us yes. healthier. We actually save, we would save billions and billions of dollars in the U S one of our right. highest expenditures is on healthcare and it's, it's sick mm -hmm. care. 
disease care. We could actually yep. prevent most of that spending if we all just ate real food. It's, um, it's amazing if we get up and go for a walk every day. Like these things don't have to be hard. Yep. They can be super powerful. And yet we're, we're missing the mark. We're not focusing on the right thing. Like you said at the beginning, we treat a symptom with a pharmaceutical or medication, but we're not going to the root. We're not going to what causes illness in the first yep. place which is largely our diet and the things that we are doing or not doing. If we're not getting good sleep, if we're not moving our body every single day, even if it's a simple walk, my new favorite exercise is just going for a walk. I love to be outside, mm -hmm. get some fresh air, let my mind just kind of wander and think and meditate. And it's free. I just walk outside here in Hawaii. I can right. even walk there, but I, didn't, I don't even need shoes to walk. <laughs> yeah, and it's so absolutely. healthy. And healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have this belief that the healthcare system was created to limit health. <laughs> it's like the education system was created to limit education. So the healthcare system was created to limit health, if you yeah. think about it. <laughs> it's yeah, like, and make you dependent, right? I mean, it doesn't yes. encourage you to make your own good choices. It encourages mm -hmm. you to go see your doctor to get a prescription every month. I mean, that's sick care. That's not health care. That's sick mm -hmm. care. We have the wrong, the wrong model. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up to almost at the end of the, the time. But I wanted to ask you before we leave, how can we find you and how we can get a hold of you? When is your book coming up? Yeah, so the easiest place uh, for people to find me is just my website, which is thomashemingway.com. So that's T-H-O-M-A-S-H-E-M-I-N-G-W-A-Y, thomashemingway.com, or on Instagram at dr for doctor dr thomas hemingway, dr thomas hemingway on Instagram, or my book. The website is the preventablebook.com. And in any of those places, I have an area of links that you can follow for either following me on social media or getting on my free weekly newsletter where I do health tips. I have a podcast myself called Modern Medicine Movement, where I discuss these natural health strategies that are very powerful. I do that generally every Thursday. I have a new episode release. I'm into my third year already podcasting, and it's been so much fun. I love to have that venue for you guys. So look me up on any of those uh, uh, social media networks at Dr. Thomas Hemingway, Dr. Thomas Hemingway, or just thomashemingway.com. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and for being here with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Just uh, a, a great, great privilege and, and honor to be with you. I hope everybody has a beautiful day and big aloha from Dr. Hemingway here in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, doctor. Thanks. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.